Okta went public a couple of years ago, so you know something about this. We have been in a roaring debate since last week about whether these companies, Snowflake, JFrog, Unity, whether they left money on the table. You see Snowflake shares going up over 100%. Where are you in this debate? Did the bankers misprice this? I think it's the wrong debate. I mean, these companies are, all these companies, Snowflake and Palantir, they have fundamentally better technologies than their competitors. They're surfing trends like everything is data centric now with Palantir and you need to analyze that data or with Snowflake, everything is moving to cloud and the workloads are on the cloud. So these companies are in a great position over the long term. And we can talk about certain specifics on the IPO, but they need to get out. They need to get their companies moving forward they need to think about all the variables just involved and not the specific price on the opening day. And they need to move on and get about their business of building great companies over the long term. Now, Palantir is going out of the gate next week. They've chosen a direct listing. Airbnb will be happening later this year. We don't know whether there'll be a direct listing or, or an IPO. If they called you for advice, what would you say? I would say, you know, there's a reason why hundreds and hundreds of companies have gone public a certain way. And you have to think really hard about trying to innovate around your IPO. You need to just get through it, get a fair price, get a good stable group of investors, uh, get a stable stock price as much as possible, get your employees comfortable as much as possible and move on and get back to the business of building your company. I think that's one thing that gets lost in all of this you're trying to build a long-term sustainable company and the fewer distractions you can have and the better relationships you can build with investors, the better for the company. Now, Todd, as we have been speaking, um, we've gotten some news in Poshmark, uh, for example, filing its uh, paperwork to go public. How do you think, obviously it seems the IPO window is wide open, but what does that mean for everything else? What does that mean for m a in this environment. Are deals happening? I think that what you're seeing is these secular, these secular shifts to cloud computing, to e-commerce. You're, you're seeing things with Snowflake or Palantir about data being incredibly valuable to companies and new tools and ways to mine that data. So you're seeing these secular shifts and there's a lot of money out there and the money wants to follow where the long-term future trends of technology are. So investors want those returns and they're willing to invest. So whether that's an IPO or M&A, the, the people are betting on those long-term trends. One thing that is interesting, I think there was a pause for a while because people had to figure out how to do some of these complex deals all online. How do you go buy a company over Zoom? How do you build that face-to-face -face relationship with that company that you're trying to buy? How, do you, how are you sure that that company is gonna work closely with you to make your customers successful? That's harder to do uh, online. It's harder, sometimes it's harder to do that to do an IPO roadshow online. So I think now that we're figuring some of that stuff out, you'll see more of these deals start to happen. Let's talk about figuring things out. Companies have now been working at home for a while now. I'm curious, now that we've been in this for six months, how is it actually impacting culture? I mean, we've heard so many CEOs say, you know, we're doing this for the foreseeable future. Employees shouldn't feel pressured to come back to the office, but is it actually working? Have you been able to build culture, you know, as you would the same way uh, if you were in the office? The main thing I think about is we have to make sure that we're open to the fact that we might not know. I mean, it's different. We haven't been through this before. People are going through incredible stresses in their personal lives with their families, um, you know, maybe health issues. So we don't know. We're trying our best. And what I tell my team at Okta is that we have to stay open to the signals coming in. How is your team doing? How is the business doing? And stay agile and take those signals and make sure we iterate and do the best thing we can. And I'm very confident that if we do that over the long term, we will not only survive, we'll also thrive through all of this and come out on the other end with a stronger company than we went into it with. Meantime, you just hired another female executive, a senior female executive, Susan St. Ledger from Splunk. And I'm curious, what is it like hiring a senior leader in COVID? And, and, and what are the trends you're seeing in hiring in general at this time? Well, this is, I couldn't be more thrilled about Susan. I, I'm, we're very lucky to get her on the team and uh, to, to help take us forward in, in the president of go-to-market role. 
And, you know, I've known Susan, I met Susan when I was working at Salesforce and she has a very unique combination of both, first of all, being very customer centric, but also when I first met her, she was selling platform at Salesforce. So she knows about how to sell platforms, her most recent experience. She knows how to sell technology to IT. She knows about the cloud delivery model. She has a technical background. She, she's led teams, she's built great teams. So we're very lucky to get her. And to your point about hiring people when everything is remote, I'm lucky to have not have had build a relationship from scratch with someone so I can bring on someone that I've known for a long time and is a world-class executive to help lead us forward. That's, I think that's a pretty fortunate position to be in because it is harder to build these relationships online. You know, we're all trying to meet people, get to know people. And, and, and sometimes in a key role like this, it's better to tap into one of the world's best leaders that you happen to already know.